Once upon a time, in a land not far away, there lived a king and a queen. And this king and queen, they were very happy. They had everything they'd ever wanted. Everything, that is, except for a child. And one day, the king, he looked at the queen, and he realised that she had grown pale and thin with this want for a child. And so he went to her and he said, My dear, tomorrow, go down to the village and speak to the wise woman and see if she can give you something that will help you fall pregnant. And so the next day, the queen did just that. She went down to the village and she knocked on the wise woman's door and the wise woman opened. Now the wise woman looked as every wise woman in stories look. They have noses that meet their chins. They have tiny dark eyes and long scraggly grey hair, but her eyes were kind. And she looked at the young queen and she smiled and she said, I know why you're here. You're here because you cannot conceive a child. And the queen nodded. And the old woman said, I know what you need. And she went to the very back of her house and when she came back out, she had in her hand two tiny red seeds. And she gave them to the young queen and she said to her, Tonight, before you go to sleep, plant these seeds in the carpet underneath your bed. Water them well and in the morning, two young plants will have grown. And on them will be fruits. Peel the fruits and eat what's within and you will fall pregnant. And the queen, she did just that. She planted the seeds in the carpet underneath her bed. And the next morning, two sturdy green plants had grown. And on them were two orange fruits. Well, she was so excited that the first one, she plucked it and she swallowed it down whole. But the second one, she remembered. She plucked it and she peeled off layer after layer of skin. Seven layers in all. And inside was a tiny red jewel of a, of a, of a fruit. And she swallowed it down, and it was not long before she fell pregnant. Nine months passed, and soon the time came for the queen to go to the very highest room in the very tallest tower and to give birth. And there she did. But she did not give birth to a baby. The queen gave birth to a lindworm, white, sticky, tiny, beady, dark eyes. And she looked at it in horror, and she screamed at her chambermaids, get it out of here! And they picked it up and they threw it out of her window, and she looked around at them all, and, they, and she said, if any of you speak of this, your heads will be on the tallest pikes at the tower entrance. And then a few seconds later, the queen, she gave birth again, but this time, she gave birth to a beautiful baby boy and she held him in her arms and she vowed that nobody would know what had happened. And the years passed and that young prince was everything his parents had ever hoped for. And it was, you see, the tradition in this land that when a young prince came of age, he had to leave his parents' kingdom and go forth into the world and find himself a bride. And so the time came for this young prince to do just that. He got on his horse and he rode towards the mountain pass. And when he got there, his way was blocked by a giant lindworm. And the lindworm looked at him out of those little dark eyes. And it said, the first son should have a wife before the second son. Now the prince, he wheeled his horse about and he galloped back towards the castle. He went into the great hall and he told his parents what had happened. And his mother then, she told the secret that she had been keeping for 18 years. The secret of her son's birth. The story of what had happened. And now the king and the queen, they fell to thinking, because you see, it was also tradition in this land that the first son should have a wife before the second son. And so, in theory, the lindworm should have a wife before their young prince could marry. And then the king hit upon an idea. He sent away to a faraway kingdom 
asking for them to send a bride over to marry the prince. A male order bride. And the princess arrived, scared, unsure, had never been to this land before. And there was a wedding ceremony in a big chapel. But there was no bridegroom, but the bride, she went ahead with it because she was in a new place. She didn't know anything. And that evening, she was taken up a set of winding stairs up to the very top of the tower, and she was put through a door, and the door was locked behind her. And she turned her face towards the bed, and on the bed was the lindworm. Well, the princess, she began to scream, and she began to scream and scream, and the lindworm flopped off the bed, and he rolled over the floor towards her. And she screamed, and she screamed, and outside the door, the king and the queen, they heard the princess's screams grow louder and louder until finally, nothing. The next day, they opened the door, bits of princess everywhere, no sign of the lindworm. And they cleared it all up, and they did it themselves because they didn't want anyone to know. And they breathed a sigh of relief, thinking that at least was over. And so the next day, the young prince, he got on his horse and he rode towards the mountain pass. And there his way was blocked once more by the lindworm. And the lindworm looked at him and he said, the first son should have a wife before the second son. And so the prince wheeled his horse about. He went back to the great hall. He told his parents what had happened. And the king and the queen, they did the same thing yet again. They ordered princess from overseas. There was a wedding ceremony with no bridegroom. The princess went up the stairs. The door was locked behind her, screaming, and then no more screaming, and no more princess. And the next day, the young prince got on his horse, went towards the mountain pass, saw the lindworm. The first son should have a wife before the second son. Wheeled his horse about, went to the great hall, told his parents what had happened. And this time, the king and the queen, they did not know what to do. Because the king thought rightly that his foreign policy possibly could not stand any more missing princesses. And standing by the window, he looked out over his fields and he said, what shall we do? And then his eye fell upon his fields, full of peasant girls working away. And he turned to his wife and he said, there's no need for the lindworm to marry a princess. We have a country full of peasant girls. We can keep marrying him off to them until we can think of something else to do. And so that is what they decided to do. The next day, the king went down to the village and he saw an old man working in his garden. He went up to him and he said, old man, do you have a daughter? And the old man said, why, yes, sire, I do. Excellent. Bring her up to the castle tomorrow. She's to marry the prince. And off the king went. Thing is, though, rumours were flying up and down the land. Rumours of body parts being found in drains, missing princesses. The people knew there was something up. And so the old man, he went to his daughter and he said, you have to get out of here. We have to go. And she said, father, where will we go? You are old, and this is our home. No, I think I know what to do. And so she went to the wise woman in the village, and the wise woman spoke to her. And that evening, she sat up all night sewing herself a wedding outfit. And the next day, she went up to the palace, and there was a marriage. And just before she was taken up to the room, the king said to her, is there anything in particular you would like for your room, my dear? And she said, yes, in fact, in the marriage chamber, I would like three tubs of caustic soda, a scrubbing brush, and a big bath of milk. And the king thought, for a dying request, it's an odd one, but we'll go ahead and we'll do it. And so the peasant girl, she was taken up those winding stairs and she was taken to that tiny door at the very top of the tower and she was put through it and the door was locked behind her and she turned her face towards the bed and there was the lindworm. And the lindworm looked at her out of those little dark eyes. 
and the girl, she looked back. Finally, the lindworm spoke, and he said, Take off your shirt and come to bed. And the girl, she said, I'll take off your shirt, my shirt if you take off your skin. Well, nothing had ever been asked of the lindworm before, and so he did just that. He dug his claws into the soft, pale flesh of his chest, and he ripped it apart. And a piece of skin, it flew off, and it flew up in the air, and it landed on the carpet. And the girl, she unbuttoned her shirt, and she took it off, and underneath it, of course, was another. And the lindworm, he looked at her, and he said, take off your shirt and come to bed. And she looked back and she said, I'll take off my shirt if you take off your skin. And so once more, the lindworm, he dug his claws into the skin of his chest. He ripped it apart. The skin flew up in the air and landed on the carpet. And the girl, she took off her shirt. And underneath that was another. And this happened seven times until the lindworm was somewhat diminished. Underneath those layers of skin was a shadow of something. And that's when the girl, she took the scrubbing brush in the first tub of caustic soda and she scrubbed and she scrubbed and the lindworm bits of skin were coming off all over the place. And she took the next tub and she scrubbed and she scrubbed until finally at the bottom of the third tub there, underneath all of that skin was the body of a man. And then she picked him up in her arms and she laid him in the bath of milk and she washed him until the skin had healed and there was nothing left but man and muscle and bone. And then she took him to bed. The next day, the king and the queen, they came up those stairs expecting to see bits of peasant girl all over the floor. And instead they saw their son and his wife. And who knows what the other prince thought? A new brother for him taking over the kingdom. But what we do know is that finally he was able to get on his horse and ride towards the mountain pass and find himself a bride. And that's the end of the story.